Hey YouTube, welcome back for another day of working on Freddy the Badger. Today, we are going to make Freddy the Badger's shirt. Okay, so using your Luna Lappin and Friends book, we're gonna look up the directions for Freddy's granddad shirt. So you can see here the picture of the shirt and there's the list of supplies that you need. You can just pause it if you need. Okay, so I uh, once you have your pattern pieces traced and cut out like I have prepared here, the next thing that you're gonna need is some fabric. Now, once again, I love using up fabrics on small projects like these where we're not trying to build an outfit for a full-size person, it's for a doll. So I pride myself in thrifting stuff from unusual places. So. This here is a pillowcase, it's a cotton polyester blend. You can see I've hacked into it for other projects before, but this pillowcase, as I had shown you in my planning video, is what I'm gonna use for his shirt because the picture shows a little bit of a stripe texture in that shirt. And so I don't have something quite like that, but I do have this ivory white that has striping in it and I thought that once we have that under the jacket and the overalls, I think this is gonna make a nice contrast and texture variety visually. So this is what we're gonna do. Let's get busy cutting it out. First, I trace all the pattern pieces with the paper and a ruler and a pencil. Make sure you include the seam allowances and all the crop marks and everything that you see on the pattern pieces. Here's my finished traced pieces ready to be cut out. Then just using an ordinary pair of scissors, cut out all the pattern pieces. This piece next is a hole punch that's used in tailoring. You see it just cuts out little slots so that you can do your markings with your tailor's chalk or fabric pen when you're ready. Next thing that we're doing here is laying out all the pattern pieces to get ready to cut out. I did opt to fussy cut these pieces one side at a time simply because I wanted to space the stripes where I wanted them to land because they're not perfectly even spaced stripes so it did need the fussy cutting to make sure the shirt look a little bit better. Now using my heat erasable fabric pen, I'm marking the fabric on all those points where I used the punch out. There you can see, piece cut out, markings in place. Now I simply fussy cut the other half. So when you cut out side number two, if you're fussy cutting like I am, you would put your pattern pieces face down so that you end up with right and left side sleeves, etc. And then finally, the last bit I cut was the back and the yoke. The yoke didn't need any fussy cutting because the front and back yoke are never in the same place, right? And then with the back piece, that was just place one and cut it on the fold. So it just made sense to cut that one out separately. So that's what I'm doing right here. So don't forget, we always want to take an envelope and make an envelope pattern for our patterns. So we're just going to take our pencil here and I'll just show you. We are going to write down like so. And then as always, you want to put all your pattern pieces away as soon as possible. You can pull them back out anytime you need to match up some seam allowances or anything. If you fold your pattern pieces and neatly put them away immediately after every use, a practice I have done as long as I've been sewing, honestly guys, you won't lose any pattern pieces. You really won't. And it's gonna make doing these projects so much more pleasant. So now you just take your basic pattern pieces, pop them in that envelope, close it up, and there it is, all sorted. So now we're at the time that we're beginning to sew. So I have, I'm back down at my sewing station here and I do have all my pattern pieces pulled out and ready to go here. They're all there. And so now what we've done here, I'm looking at the direction book and you can see that we've already done the cutting out 
And now the first step you're gonna be doing, look at those pictures there. We're going to be making the front plackets for the shirt. So this is where, when you keep your pattern pieces all nice and organized, it's so easy. Just open up your envelope and pull out that shirt front again. And here it is, the shirt front. Because on here you can see the suggested markings. The directions tell you to press this into place and then we're gonna top stitch it. So here we go. So I also wanted to point out, if you look, the markings that you did, do you see how they line up? with what's on here, right? So if you press your quarter of an inch off those first markings, and then once you have this pressed under, you see I just finger pressed, you're gonna fold it the second time. And then once you have that pressed, we're gonna top stitch down either side. Now I'm pressing in those sides one quarter inch to start, press that down, and then folding on the other marking as described and press that down as well. Once your machine is threaded, run those seams and top stitching as described. Here's the finished piece so you can see it up close. And then continue for side two. Next, we're going to gather the upper back of the shirt just like this. You're going to run two lines of gathering stitches between the dots and then gather it so that next we can attach the yoke. So now you can see that I have it gathered and between the dots I've pinned it really tightly together to just try and help those layers not shift. But now we're going to run a seam straight across the edge here. Here we go. So I wasn't entirely thrilled with the spacing of my gathers. So to try and center it out and even it out a little more here, I've pinned it all again and I'm gonna run a second line of stitching before I attach the second half of the hook. And now look here when you can see that I did actually achieve like a much more centered, even attractive gathering on this. Now we're gonna attach the back yoke. So once you have this like this, it's gathered, you have your yoke attached, See, it's all uh, pressed into place here, right? You can definitely see the gathering here. And now what the next directions say to do is you're gonna fold this back down. You're gonna turn this over. You're gonna take your other yoke and you're gonna pin this down and stitch it in as well so that once it's sewn, your pieces are gonna come up like this and you're gonna have a right side out and right side out together. Let's do it. Okay everyone, so I wanted to point out here that the directions actually called for you to make all these gatherings and layers at once. And to be honest, I think I find it easier, like I stitched down the gathering layer first and now I'm gonna add the yoke on the top. everyone so the directions call for this to be hand width stitched down under here and then to top stitch it but once again it's such a tiny seam they're only like an inch and a bit long each I'm actually just gonna try top stitching the whole thing let's see how we do now it's time to press the sleeve hems the directions say to press up one quarter inch and then a second time, one quarter inch, and then you're simply gonna machine hem that into place. Now we have the sleeves with the bottoms hemmed like this. 
If you recall, the pen markings that I'm using is one of these heat erasable pens. So there was actually some marks at the bottom for uh, making a pleat and attaching the button that got ironed off. So this is where we're just gonna go back into our pattern and we're just gonna remark those parts again, okay? So here we go, locate your sleeve and you'll notice that the pleat markings with the star and the dot are on the same side as the double notch top. So wherever we see our double notch, in this instance, we're gonna turn this piece around like this and we're gonna mark those bits. Let's do it. So you can see I marked like a tiny little symbol to just give me a, not a notification like that would be the star point and that's the dot point. Okay, everyone, so now I have both the uh, little shirt sleeves here. Um, the directions say to bring the star shape on the wrong side of the fabric. You're gonna make this pleat by folding the star shape to the dot shape, which I did. They say to just tack it down with a button, but I don't know, guys, experiences has taught me just tack it first, right? So I just, and like, I don't mind hand sewing, but I avoid it a lot too because it just takes good honest time. So I just ran these right along the machine to give them a little dart. And then I, you know, do you ever go to the fabric store and you buy those bags of buttons for like $2 or $5 and it's got like hundreds of buttons in them? I have some of those too. So I happen to have, you know, I you sort them all into different little piles. So I have this little bag of small, ivory colored buttons as we have the buttons so I just pulled one out and you can just see it's just a nice you see it's just a nice little ivory button and I think it's complimentary whoops it's small enough and complimentary enough that this is what we're gonna do And here you can see I'm holding up this hemmed sleeve, supposing what it's going to look like once it's actually put together. Okay, so now we have our two sleeves here with the um, button pleats attached, right? You can see those ready to go. And now the next thing that the directions tell us to do is we're going to attach the sleeves to the actual garment. So what the directions say to do here, I'll just show you that picture up here. So what you're gonna be doing is matching your notches on the actual shirt and the sleeve parts, and then we're gonna line it up, pin it, and sew it together. Okay, everyone, so the directions don't call for this part, but I'm just gonna show you that I did run a single line of uh, gathering stitching here so that when we pin the sleeve into the shoulder area, honestly, that tiny bit of ease that you can just work with your fingers, it just takes a lot of the work out of it. So even though the directions didn't call for it, it's a pretty standard practice when you're trying to ease a sleeve to have that line of stitching you can manipulate. So I just put that into place. So now we're gonna attach the sleeve. Okay, so it turned out to be like super fussy to pin this into place and make it fit. I'm gonna try and stitch one side. Let's see how we do. So now you can see here we do have the shirt done with the sleeves are attached. Everything from the underside here is still open, but not for long. So the directions don't actually call for us to finish these seams, but I'm probably just gonna do a little zigzag stitch on the other machine. And um, the next thing that we're doing before we actually close up the sides is we're attaching the collar. So first I'm just gonna finish those seams and then the directions say to stay stitch the collar all the way around and then we're gonna clip some curves. I'll show you that. So next. here we are, we have the shirt and you can see that I have just a zigzag stitch, but you know, just a little something to finish off the seams on the inside of the little shirt. 
And so there it is, stretched out from the outside. And so now you can see what I have done here is I did stay stitch all along the edges here. And now I'm just gonna tilt this down so you can watch a little better and we are gonna clip the curves. All right, so here we go. We're gonna clip the curves on this. All right, and so there you see when you stretch it out, you can see the clipped curves. Now we're going to do the collar. So now you can see here that we have a quarter inch pressed up on one side of the collar only, and I've got it pinned together and from underneath the fold here, right? We're gonna start sewing there and all the way around. I'll be back. Here it is sewn now. And we're just gonna turn this inside out or right side out, I should say. We're gonna press that and you can just clip the curves a little and then come back. Here's the collar pinned into place. It doesn't look like much, but I'm trying to show you. Um, so like that's on the shirt side, I guess, if you will. And then you see what's gonna become the right side out. So the, um, the piece that we pressed, I trimmed it a little to get the color off of it because of the striped fabric was causing an issue. But once this is stitched, this is gonna turn over that way and form the collar. So now, basically, we're gonna go stitch this. Alrighty, everyone, so you can see the shirt is starting to take shape here. Um, here is Freddie's collar. Back of the shirt yoke. So all that I have to do now is top stitch the edging of this and then we're ready to hem it and do the arms and stuff. Now that I've top stitched the collar, it's time to actually assemble the sides. So we're gonna turn it inside out and you're gonna match up your underarm seams and we're gonna pin and stitch along each side. Let's do it. I just wanted to show you my buttonhole setup. This is on my computerized machine, the little one that I got, the smaller brother, but that's the computerized one. And so you do see it is a plastic attachment and there's an extra lever that you pull down here and tuck behind there. And then I'll just show you back here. You see the little itty bitty button is tucked into that measuring piece and it will allow us to produce some buttonholes. So we're gonna put the buttonholes on Freddie's shirt. In addition to the buttonhole at the back of the buttonhole marker, you're going to wanna to mark off your buttonholes at even spaces apart. Um, again, this is one of these heat erasable markers. So all of these marks are gonna disappear after I iron this, but now we're gonna run these buttonholes. And this particular buttonhole that I chose on my machine is designed for like lighter weight fabric. So it has the anchor across at the end at the bottom, it kind of curves around. And um, interestingly enough, you actually start this one at the bottom of the buttonhole and it kind of goes up and down. So I'll just demonstrate it for you now. So now I have this inserted and I'm just pushing this up until I see the bottom of a buttonhole marked there. And then I put my presser foot down do you see how it's gonna go in? It's hard to see the angle, but it's pretty much spot on on the blue marking there. And so now I'm just gonna sew it and we can watch this happen. Here we go. And now we pull it out. So here is the shirt with the buttonholes made. Now I will point out if you look very closely, you can see how it has a curved bottom. And then when you get up here, what happened? I had to do it upside down. Because of the length of that plastic piece for the buttonholder, it didn't want to get through this um, interruption in the flow up here. So I had to do that buttonhole upside down, but I don't think it's really gonna show once I do the buttons. Just remember everyone, when I press this, 
um, that uh, blue is gonna disappear. We're gonna cut it apart and you're gonna see those buttonholes are gonna function just fine. And previously, I had marked the other side already. So rather than just press that color out, I'm gonna use it as the markers for my buttons. That'll be next. And now we are going to take these four little ivory colored buttons and attach them to Freddie's shirt. Now we're going to cut the buttonholes. These were already pressed. All we're going to do is fold it in the middle. Take your finest, sharpest scissors that you can. We're just gonna snip through that fold. Of course, it's not doing it, one sec. There we go. And once you know you've got a little hole in the middle that you can fit your scissors through like that, now you can simply cut it the rest of the way. And then once you have your buttonhole cut, you can test it out with the button. And there you have it, a button on Freddie's shirt. And here is what the finished inside of the shirt looks like. Let's see, it's all hemmed, it's got the yoke finished neckline. I did finish those inside seams. And now here on the outside, there's all the buttons and there's all the button holes. And don't forget we have the detail on the sleeves here on the back of these sleeves. Each of them has that. I'll we'll just show you the back as well. One sec here. And there you can see the back of the shirt as well with the little details of the pleats and the buttons and um, the gathered back and the yoke, the whole bit, the little collar. So there it is guys, that's the shirt. So here is Freddie in his pinstripe shirt and you can see he's got the buttons going down the front and around the back. We do have these nice little details such as the little um, buttons and the pleats on the sleeves and this is all gathered and it's got a proper finish yoke and I think it's looking pretty good. He's starting to look pretty handsome, don't you think? All right, well coming up soon guys will be his uh, pants coming up next but thanks so much for watching this video and don't forget to like and comment and subscribe. <laughs>